So we landed in Managua and uh, Javier was late because his vehicle was having problems. So we went out, we tried to leave, but then the, uh, the uh, radiator was cracked and there was some sketchy stuff going on. He's getting all <laughs> frustrated. So now we're stuck at the airport waiting for him to get a rental car to go get the cap for the radiator. I and mean, we've been here for so long. We've been here for a long time. A little long. Yeah. And I always say it's like when we first travel, we want to like have fun. You know, you want to do something fun. So I told Ben I was going to go to the airport and I was going to come back, darn it, with something fun. So did I do all right? You did all right. Seriously? Yeah. What did I get? What did I got? I got a macchiato. A macchiato. And uh, some empanadas. Empanadas? That's fun. And we got a little chocolate. So we're having fun for a little while. <laughs> we're having a good attitude. We're trying to keep it real. We don't know if he's going to come back. <laughs> All right, so we 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 ended up just deciding we're gonna rent the car. So we rented a car, right? Maserati. It, yes, Maserati. it is like a Maserati, and it's it's a pretty Small sweet car. Yeah. It's, it's getting the job done, and we're having good conversations about all kinds of stuff, <laughs> learning a lot about Nicaragua. And uh, Ben's in the back there, he's hanging in there. He's hanging praying in there for in the us. Back. Yeah, he's praying for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on our way to the farm. We're gonna stay at the farm tonight. But first, we're gonna stop at where are we stopping. We're gonna stop there for to get uh, some natural juices. Fruit oh, we're getting juice. natural juices. Natural. Get out of here. Right here. Like I didn't know. Ooh, can we get away. some? Uh, get a little Florida kind of rum and put some yeah. in the, rum in the juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to do that at night when you're driving. <laughs> that kind of uh, the sugar cane juice. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. Fermented. Is. Oh yeah, fermented. Of course. <laughs> what are we doing now? What are we, what's going on here? Uh, we're. Uh, changing US it's actually a common occurrence when you're, on, uh, when you're traveling in coffee country to uh, get your, your currency exchanged by a local like this. Um, you get hosed if you go to banks or ATMs. Awesome. Look at that, huh? It looks like the guy was from Scotland. Mm -hmm. He's a redhead. He's from Scotland. Yeah, he's from Scotland. Scottish money changer. Right, Nicaragua. It's Cordova's, right? 2,800 quarters. Cordovas, one hundred dollars. So one hundred Cordovas is like what, three dollars and fifty cents? Uh, something like that. I was giving Ben crap because he went to the ATM <laughs> and he got me a hundred Cordovas. Yeah, That's plenty of money. he was gone like fifteen yeah. minutes. I was like, thanks, dude, you got me three dollars. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So places like this are a must whenever you're traveling uh, in coffee country. You gotta check out this one. This is like smoothie heaven. The fruit is super fresh, excellent. Just you can't you can't beat it. Honestly. The only thing that's key is making sure that you don't let them put ice in it. Because the ice will make you seriously sick. You also definitely want to stay away from things like grapes, apples, anything where they might put the, the actual fruit in there with the skin on it, because that skin's been washed by the tap water, uh, and that can make you seriously sick. So stick to bananas, pineapples, stuff like that. You gotta tell me. I don't know. It's, you, it's, it's mango. It's, it's mango. white. Yeah. Oh, mango. Yeah. What do you have in yours? You, that's the I second one. Kiwi. That's the second <laughs> one he's yeah. had. Kiwi. <laughs> Pineapple. And, and grape. All right, mine's passion fruit juice and like a lot of good stuff. I don't even know what's in there, but it's pretty good. So cheers. 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 One thing that's pretty common in Central America in general is you get off the airport and you're you're at sea level and everything is dry and pine trees and it doesn't feel tropical at all. But once you get near the volcanoes, the pumice layer, the actual volcano from previous eruptions, the fertile soil kicks in. You get this uh, dry, but then when you get climb up in the mountains, mm -hmm. it's lush and, and coffee yeah. and yes, up so in the mountain areas. Yeah, mountainous. Like how far? What's the elevation now? Would you say? Here's very low because we're near the lake of Managua. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe, let's say about 200, 300, 200 feet above sea level. So we'll eventually be climbing up to yeah. about 5,000 5, feet. We drive into the night, but finally arrive in Matagalpa, which is really the sort of foothills of the volcano. It's the beginning of coffee country. That's one of the best parts of traveling is that first morning when you get to a new place, everything smells different, feels different, and you get to go have a nice coffee at the local coffee shop. Awesome. 
Yeah, you know, coffee shops are one of the places where you see all the other travelers from different parts of the world. It's pretty fascinating the kind of people you meet. These days, everyone's like stuck to their phone because there's no Wi-Fi when you travel. So it's your one little hub where you can check your emails and do all your things. Driving around in and of itself is just totally entertaining. I mean, looking out and just seeing a different world. This is like a Zocalo. These are in the center of the town. In Mexico, they call these Zocalos. In Nicaragua, I can't remember the name, but uh, it's the center of everything. So we're on our way to see a guy named Enrique, who has a coffee farm. Um, supposedly a really nice farm. We're going to go visit his farm, but first we're going to go to his coffee shop, which is very common. Many of the farmers will have, will have a nice coffee shop in town, at least those that are really into this sort of specialty side of coffee. Oh, that's one of the things I love about Nicaragua is everything is like really smooth or rich or both. The cigars, the rum, the coffee. It's just like, it's the perfect place to visit. You can. So Mario is a coffee farmer. He's the one driving us up to visit his farm. Like something that you start doing today and forget it. You will never ever give up on coffee. Even maybe you go and you can go very through a very difficult time. Mario really struggles on his farm because he pays a lot of tax and the interest rates are really high in the loans, but he sticks with it. And coffee farmers have a saying that's prominent throughout coffee culture in Central and South America, and that is, you're born under a coffee tree, you die under a coffee tree. It's not very common to switch industries. Oh, after a long ride in the truck, there's nothing like getting out and exploring the land here. I mean, it's just so lush and it just smells so fresh with that waterfall. So we're going uh, to Mario's farm and we're, this is part of the natural process of looking for the coffee. Once you get up here, I mean, you're just, it, the, the soil is so fertile. You could just throw anything in the ground and it just loves to grow. And this is the, this is the top right at Mario's farm here. And we're at about, I'd say about 4,500 feet of elevation, which coffee loves it at this elevation because it's cool weather and uh, so the maturation process is slower so the beans develop more density and sweetness among other things. You can see here all of this is his farm and these are all coffee trees that you see in those rows. And as we begin to walk the farm he's starting to explain to us where he keeps, where he plants different varieties. Most people know that know of arabica but they don't realize that arabica is a species of coffee but there are many varieties within that species All this is katura. okay <clears throat> if you see it's very very strong tree katura. you could also refer to katura as a cultivar because it was cultivated variety in other words it was made by man in this case it was developed in brazil it's it's highly tolerant of sun and produces a great yield This is called hoja de gallo. If you see over here, okay, it's already dead, already the, the, the fungus, see, it's, it's clean. But when you see a little, uh, uh, like a little hairs over here, it means it's still alive, but it's already being controlled by the, <clears throat> all the uh, products that we have been, been using. If you see, you can tell that it's already controlled because all these leaves are brand new. So if, if this would have still alive, we wouldn't see uh, all this right here. And then it would wipe out the rest vicious. Of the they can just destroy the livelihoods of entire families and communities yeah. and um, have a, just a massive effect. And the thing is, you can actually spread the fungus by touching it up against your clothes and you can infect other plants on the farm. So you've got to be really careful where you go. This Catuaya Amarillo in Borbon is on that side over there. It's a much harder coffee to grow in this type of plant. So Catuai Amarillo is uh, yellow Catuai, and uh, then he's got Bourbon, which is um, one of the first, very first cultivars. Uh, came from Tipica, which is one of the original uh, species of Arabica. And we have to do it whether we like it or not. 
eventually you have to do them. One of the reasons, you, you know, you plant different varieties sometimes in different parts of the farm because they, they do better in certain areas. Some do better with more sun, some do better with more shade. Uh, so there's a real strategic science behind the plant placement and where you grow them and, and nurture them. There's a strategy behind all these beautiful flowers as well. They attract butterflies and hummingbirds, which in return pollinate trees which then shade the coffee or even plantain trees like this and these let me tell you make some really tasty platanos so what we're doing is we're having um what are we having here uh, plantain, plantain chips yes plantain chips yes and also we're having a what's this a malanga. malanga malanga and he showed me this this malanga and this stuff is these big, they look like elephant ears and they grow right out of the farm. So these are dried chips that are grown right from the farm. Right here on the farm. These are 100% a, how do you call those? A, eggs? The eggs. Oh, the eggs are from those chickens? Yeah, free range. Yeah. I was gonna say, they're pretty, yeah, they're really free range. They're like roaming all around the farm. Yeah. And there's geese, and the geese are aggressive too. You gotta watch out for the geese. You have to see their, their eggs. They're very big like that. And what do you do with the eggs? We eat them too. You eat the eggs? You eat the geese? You eat the geese? The kids are gonna like this video. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're supposed to, you just got a bath. You're supposed to be uh, clean. <laughs> this is a totally different farm nearby and his the gentleman that runs this farm is named Enrique and his sister Tanya is also very involved with the farm and they are extremely meticulous about their their cultivation of coffee This is the coffee cupping process, and uh, most coffee farms have cupping rooms. This one's actually a really good-sized room with a big cupping table, and you can really just get a sense for all the coffees, from the fragrance, which is when you smell the coffee dry, to the uh, aroma, which is when you smell the coffee um, after the grinds kind of get dipped into the hot water. So, um, and, then you've, and then you slurp the coffee. Um, and that's when you, you pick up the flavor, and you also get the nose, which is the vapor that comes up into your palate. Now they're going to take us to the farm and we're going to watch the process of the washing of the coffee. Um, and this is classic washing of the coffee. And the, the, the unripe beans, the floaters, will always float to the top and those will get siphoned off into a different area. And they'll actually dry those, those coffees and sell them um, on the low end market internally. So this is a really massive operation, really well done. I mean, talk about a fancy schmancy drying area. It's kind of like a big greenhouse, as you can see, and that helps you control the temperature. Um, but most importantly, also in any intermittent rains prevents the rain from hitting the beans. And these, you can see the beans are all, that's kind of gold outer shell, needs to get ripped off in the mill. There's still some processing that has to be done, and we're gonna watch that in a minute here. So this begins the process of sorting the coffees. This is a, a density bed, and you get different uh, densities of coffees separated off. The coffees are being separated on size and density, and then they all go off into their own little areas. I couldn't resist having a little fun with the iPhone here, so I put it on the, uh, the little tread here and uh, that's where they're sorting the coffees. And these women just sort through, man. They pick out the defects, you know, uh, beans that have been gnawed away at by beetles. Um, that's their own dump, a bunch of different criteria for defects, but uh, they're very good at it, that's for sure, and they're fast. <laughs> 